Hi, we are Chuan Xin Chong and Jacqueline Barkowski. We are presenting Code for Sec and we are very excited to be part of Safe Drinking Water Data Challenge. We would like to walk you through some of the ideas and the model that we developed uh, so that everybody in the state of California will have sufficient, safe and affordable drinking water. So in this presentation, we're going to discuss about risk model that we developed, data sets that used in the model, the challenges that we encounter while preparing for the data sets, and the next step. We believe that the model and the two sets that we have developed able to answer some of the data challenge questions. For example, it's, they are able to provide a new way to visualize the data to help all the Californians understand the problem and also able to better identify community that may be vulnerable and also able to help groundwater sustainability agency to map water shortage. Our risk model consists of three components. The first one is indicator, second is modeling, the last one is the risk score. So we have identified seven key indicators in the model. First one is the groundwater depth level, second one is the precipitations, these two are the water source to the drinking water and the third one is the disadvantaged community and we include these indicators so that we can help those community better and the fourth one is the pesticide fifth one is the groundwater threats uh, six hazard waste and the last one is drinking water contaminants so the last four indicators are more like disruption to the drinking waters for the modeling part uh, we treat all the indicators equally by applying the same weight to the equations. For the risk score components, the higher the score, that means there's a higher risk of not having the safe drinking waters. The score will later compare to the public water system status, either say in compliance, our compliance, or return to compliance. We seeing this entire workflow is a continuous uh, improvement. If we find any indicators from a public water system information that is not included in the model, we can ref uh, refining the model and make it better. First indicator that we would like to talk is the precipitations. The data set that we use for this indicator is total precipitation in 2017. The data set is acquired from PRISM Climate Group at uh, Oregon State University. From the left figure, we can see that the blue colors uh, representing high precipitations, the ground uh, color representing low precipitations. And all those values at the pixel level uh, will be aggregated up to water basin boundary, uh, which we call hydrological code unit HUC08. How do we derive risk score from precipitations? We use one of the statistic component called quantile or percentile. For each HUC08 polygon, we compare 2017 total precipitation to its own historical data set. If the percentile is 100%, that means 2017 has the highest rainfall in last 30 years. On the other hand, if the percentile is close to zero, that means 2017 has the lowest rainfall in last 30 years. We believe that the quantile or the percentile is more suitable uh, comparing to direct precipitation value. For example, the southern highlighted polygon has lower rainfall comparing to the north highlighted polygon because brown color has lower value comparing to the green color. But if you look at the historical data set of the southern polygon in the lower left figures, uh, 2017 rainfall is actually is the highest in last seven years. So we use percentile in the risk score calculations instead of 17, 2017 precipitations values. Let's look at the percentile for the year 2015, the left figures, and 2017, the right figures. In 2015, a lot of areas in the Central Valley have very low rainfall comparing to its own historical data set. But the situation has improved in 2017. 
a lot of areas in the Central Valley have changed from brown to blue. Only the southern part of the state remained the same. We compare our finding to US drought monitor maps. We can see that 2015 maps shows the same trend as our finding, which almost entire Central Valley areas were in extreme drought. 2017 maps also shows the situations have improved. The next indicator we would like to discuss is the groundwater depth level. While preparing for the dataset, we found outliers in some of the wealth dataset. In the upper left figures, we can see that one point jumped from close to zero value to 1,000 feet. It's impossible for the groundwater to drop 1,000 feet within short period of time. We found the same outlier when we are trying to verify the dataset on the Sigma website. In order to remove the outlier before feeding into our model, we set three standard deviation range for all the data set. That means any value which is less or more than three standard deviation will be removed. The lower left figure shows the data set after the outlier is removed. How do we use groundwater depth level to derive risk score? We calculated the risk score from the train or the slope uh, for the historical data set. We investigated into two time frames to see which one is better to represent the current risk score. First time frame is last 10 years from 2008 to 2018. Second time frame is 2014 to 2008. And from upper left figures and first black dotted line, uh, that's the last 10 years uh, time frame. And we can see the trend is actually increasing which means that the depth to, water, uh, depth to groundwater is increasing or you can say that the groundwater level is dropping. And But if you see that from the second black dotted line, which is the last four years, the trend is actually opposite and the depth to uh, groundwater is uh, decreasing or you can say that the groundwater level is increasing. So the, to better represent the most current situations, we pick the second time frame, which is from 2014 to 2018. All the red points represent slope that's more than five feet per year for the first time frame, which is from 2008 to 2018. The positive slope shows the decreasing trend in the groundwater level. There are a lot of red points in the southern part of Central Valley. All the yellow points represent slope that's more than five feet a year for the second time frame, which is from 2014 to 2018. We can see that the groundwater level has improved in general, as the yellow points are less than the red points in the previous slide. The next step is to overlay the yellow points from the last slide with the hydrologic code unit HUC08 boundaries. The polygons that touches the yellow points will be assigned with 100% risk score. The value in the HUC08 boundary is then aggregated to the final census tract boundary using area weighted mean calculation. This slide shows the risk score for the depth to groundwater indicator. We notice that a lot of high risk areas, which is red color, are focusing in Central Valley regions. The next indicator is disadvantaged community. A lot of people have impressions that our compliance public water systems are in disadvantaged community. In order to verify this assumption, we overlay the public water system with disadvantaged community boundary. We found that out that indeed there are more our compliance public water systems in disadvantaged community, which we can see from uh, the charts. However, there are also more in compliance uh, water systems. Uh, in the disadvantaged community comparing to non-disadvantaged community. This shows that uh, this indicator is very important uh, but it's not the main driver. We use medium household income to calculate risk score for this indicator. The lowest medium household income will be assigned to 100% whereas the highest medium household income will be assigned to 50%. Any values in between is estimated using the linear regressions. 
The next indicator is groundwater threats. The threats are the pollutants from the underground fuel tank at the gas stations or transportation facility. The next indicator is hazardous waste. The pollutants are from recycling, treatment, storage, and disposal facilities. The score is calculated based on how close it is to the neighborhood. The next indicator is groundwater threats. The pollutants are from 13 contaminants and two types of water quality violations. The score is calculated using average concentration. The next indicator is a pesticide. The score is calculated from the number of pounds of seven selected pesticide used from 2012 to 2014. This slide shows the final risk score, which is the third component in our model. We are applying equal weights to all indicators. The final score is calculated by summing all the indicators scores and dividing the result by the number of indicators. The higher risk regions are shown in a red color. We identify Kern County as having one of the highest risk scores. This county would make a great example to further investigate vulnerabilities because public water system in this county has been out of compliance for various issues in the past. Kern County is also vulnerable to different risks, including agriculture runoff, wildfires, oil waste dumping, and drought. The red star on the left figure are all the our compliance public water system. When we did a further investigation on one of the our compliance public water systems and look at the annual electronic reports, we found that it had been out of compliance due to arsenic levels, which could be from pesticide or natural, naturally occurring, nitrate, which could be from agriculture, 123 one, TCP used as a cleaning and decreasing solvent, and also is asso associated with pesticide products, and combined uranium, which could be due to deeper dark wells as a result of drought conditions. For this reason, we would like to use electronic annual report to identify the strongest predictor of public water system closures in Kern County. Then we could scale this prediction model to the rest of California. Our goal would be to predict public water system closures before they occur. We have built a web application to demonstrate all the layers uh, that we developed, including the seven indicators and the final component, which is the final risk score. Let's look at the, our uh, final risk score. And you can see that a lot of high risk uh, area uh, focusing in the Southern Central Valley regions. And if we click on uh, any of the polygon, and you can get all the attributes in the table as well. And from the layer two onwards are all the indicators that are used in the model. 